All right, speaking of all that water, we are a little over a week into California's new water year, and the outlook isn't stunning at this point. We're slowly entering the Northern California wet season, but the current larger scale weather patterns like La Nina means that we could be in for a dry winter, but it does go much deeper than that. Here's Brenda Minchef. You have kind of a train wreck of, of dryness producing influences for sure. Those were the words of meteorologist Robert Henson when talking about this persistent dry pattern over the western United States. But it isn't just the fact that we haven't had rain. It's that the atmosphere is in several different ways hurting a wet pattern from developing on the west coast. Not only in California, but across the United States and many parts of the world, uh, El Nino has a substantial role in predicting uh, rainfall during the, um, the northern winter, which of course is the wet season in California. I mean, certainly overall, ENSO is the big enchilada. Of course, there's more than El Nino La Nina. For example, there's also what's known as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. The PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation, you can think of it kind of like a longer term um, El Nino Southern Oscillation. It's, it's kind of a way of looking at the aggregated um, effects that we think of as associated with El Nino La Nina. Another one that is really impacting us right now is the Pacific North American Oscillation, or PNA. It's in its positive phase right now, where high pressure persistently lingers over the West Coast, blocking approaching storms. I see the PNA as kind of a descriptor as much as anything. It's not like something like El Nino La Nina where it sets in and you pretty much know it's going to be in place for most of the winter into the spring. There are signs some of these patterns might change this winter. And no one of these things means it's a foregone conclusion that we're in for a dry winter. It just means that the overall pattern makes it less likely for storm after storm to hit California. And Brendan Mincheff is here with me now. Brendan, I feel like a lot of people are wondering how much rain do we need to declare ourselves out of a drought? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's a good question. And I, I don't have an exact number for that. I'm not sure there is an exact number, but we do know that it's going to take a lot of atmospheric rivers. It's going to take a lot of wintertime storms, storm after storm, really spaced out over the course of a winter. You know, we don't want it all at once. That's too much to handle. We really need it, you know, a little bit in October, a little bit in November, maybe a little more December, January, and really set us off onto a good start into the summer months. And before we go, could we see these patterns shift more to wet conditions or dry conditions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, we're already starting to see potentially this La Nina maybe is going to go a little more neutral or more El Nino by the time we get to spring or summer of next year. Um, but uh, some of these, like the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, literally can take 20 to 25 years uh, to change into a new phase or a new state. Uh, the PNA with that high pressure, that is more of a weekly to uh, biweekly kind of pattern. Uh, so these do, things do change, but right now they're stacked against us.